He said he was led to Christ by a British missionary named Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor. Welcome back to episode number 37, which we entitled Nuggets of Gold, Becoming One of Them. Many verses in the New Testament give us insight and understanding of missions and a missionary's work. Once discovered and assimilated, these verses will change the missionary's life forever. One of these nuggets addresses the concept of becoming one of them. The approach sounds simple, yet most missionaries are never taught it and therefore never discover it. We are, in fact, taught to do exactly the opposite, to teach them to become like us. For example, travel to any developing nation and you will see the western steeples of church buildings piercing the local landscape. We teach them to wear white shirts and ties in order to be respectful to God. Where does it say that in Scripture? We give them nicknames from our culture, feeding them our food and expect them to wear our clothing. There was once a missionary about 100 years ago named Hudson Taylor. He realized that exporting his British culture to China, along with the gospel message, hindered some Chinese from even accepting Christ. Many Chinese thought that becoming a Christian meant to become British, and therefore to adapt their food, their clothing, their lifestyle. In response to this, he moved out of the mission compound to a rented room. He wore the clothes of a Chinese coolie, the lower class of the people, and grew his hair long for a queue, which is the ponytail worn by Chinamen. Let me illustrate it to you here. This is a drawing of Hudson Taylor who started China Inland Mission. Here was a drawing someone made of him going to meet a Chinese official. He's bowing before him, but I want you to see something on his... He had long hair. He had hair down to here, but he pulled it back to, and wore it in what is called a queue in China. This man has one here. You can see the beginnings of one back there. A cue was a religious thing. The Chinese people believed that when you died as your spirit was falling into hell, if you had the cue, the ponytail, an angel could reach up and grab you by your ponytail and take you to heaven. If you didn't have one, the game's over. You drop into hell forever. They literally believed that, and that's why it was such a horrible thing. Sometimes before executing a prisoner, they would cut his cue off. That was to say to him and to his family, he's going to go to hell. There's nothing you can do about it. Now, we know Hudson Taylor didn't believe that, but he saw it evidently as a cultural thing. In order to identify with them, he had the cue. He wore the same type of hat they did, the same type of clothes they did, the same type of shoes they did, the same type of stockings they did. He became one of them so he can reach them. Now, his mission board fired him for it. He lost all of his support overnight because of this. Question, have you ever heard of Hudson Taylor? Yes. Have you ever heard of one of the men on the mission board who fired him? Can you give the name of one of the missionaries in China that disowned him? No. But we do remember Hudson Taylor. Let me tell you a little story about Hudson Taylor. Back around 1987, when we had first started our ministry, I was in Thailand. I took my older brother, Ben, and my dad with me, and we were eating in the home of one of our national preachers, one of the three men that first took me to the Akka tribe, where we can begin the conversion of that entire tribe over a five to 10 year period. 540,000 of them came to Christ. As we were sitting in this man's house, he had a visitor there with him. So as the wife was preparing the food, I was talking to the visitor. He was from a tribe called Wa. And when I heard that, it kind of made me nervous because the Wa lived along eastern Burma, southern China, northern Thailand, western Laos. They are a headhunting tribe. Twice a year, they go out on a headhunting party when they had two rice harvests a year. So every time before the rice harvest, they would go out, capture somebody, cut his head off, and stick his head in the field in order to appease the demon spirits who would then bless their rice harvest. Some people thought they were horrible to do that, but I, the way I looked at it is that uh, everybody's always trying to get ahead. So I pause for your laughter. Okay, laughter's over. The thing that concerned me was he was from the Wa tribe and it was rice harvest time. And here I am sitting with him. But he told me, he said, don't worry, don't be afraid. I guess he saw it in my face. He said, I'm a believer. 
And I said, how did you become a believer? He said, my dad led me to Christ. I said, how did your dad become a believer? He said, his dad led him to Christ. So that's incredible. I said, how did your grandfather become a believer? And he said, his dad led him to Christ. Oh, that is outstanding. And then I asked him, how did your great grandfather or whatever it is now become a Christian? being from the Wa tribe after all. And he said he was led to Christ by a British missionary named Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor. So I've personally been able to meet the downline converts of Hudson Taylor who did a tremendous job in missions. Taylor, as I said, was such an embarrassment to his fellow missionaries and board that they disowned him. Being alone and without funds, he started the China Inland Mission. He revolutionized missions by taking the gospel from the seacoast to the inland of China, which was an area that had been intentionally overlooked by the missionaries. Let me explain to you why this is so important. Until the time of Hudson Taylor, in almost every country in the world that had missionaries, they always settled along the coast. Why? The weather was better. If there was a national emergency, you could get out of the country easier because of seaports. You had access to goods being shipped in and out and so forth. Usually the majority of the people in the country lived along the coast, so it was the logical place to go. But everybody knew that there were masses and masses of people living inside China in the interior. Hudson was disturbed. He was, he was spiritually burdened because all the missionary influence was being done along the coast like this. He wanted to take the gospel to the interior of China. And he made such a big deal about that in publicizing his ministry that it became known as the China Inland Mission. After people took notice of what Hudson was doing, you had the African Inland Mission, the Sudan Interior Mission, and many other mission boards began to rise up for the purpose of taking the gospel to people in unreached countries who were not even being attempted to be reached because they didn't live along the coast. Isn't that incredible? The impact that one man can make in missions. Doing this, he actually began a new age of missions and a pattern that missionaries copied around the world. Taylor was not the first man to discover new insights into missions. You are likely taught that Paul's name was changed from Saul to Paul on the road to Damascus when he was converted. The name change actually happened years later on his first missionary trip to the Gentiles to whom God had called him. He abandoned his Hebrew name of Saul for the Roman equivalent of Paul. He intentionally identified with them even in his persona. Identifying with the people was his first step in becoming all things to all men so that by all means he might save some. And even before Paul, the greatest missionary of all, Jesus Christ, became one of us so we could understand his message. Would you be willing to adopt a new lifestyle like food, clothing, etc., to be accepted and produce fruit for Christ? Early single British missionaries to Africa, whose message would not be accepted because of coming from foreigners, married African women to become one of them. It worked. Western culture is global, so there is less for us to change unless you target unreached tribal groups. Can you find some unreached online to pray for and then support national missionaries to reach them? They live right in the tribe's own backyards. We hope you've enjoyed this episode in our Understanding the Great Commission series. If you'd like a copy of the book, it's available in paperback, audiobook, and digital download. Just click the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.